Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, distributors of all sizes, CommonSkew proudly presents to you Hacks and What's New. My name is Aaron, and I'm the manager of customer success. And if you weren't fortunate enough to attend CommonSkew University before the PPAI show, this webinar is for you. Or maybe you just want to go through the amazing experience that you had again, this webinar is also for you. Today, we're going to talk about some tips and hacks that I have for you inside of the system, along with what's new, what we've released over the course of the last year. We're going to go through this pretty quickly. The nice thing is you have a recording of it, so you can always jump back if I'm talking a little bit too fast. So let's jump into it. So the first thing we're going to look at are some hacks. Very first hack is called title first. If you create a lot of presentations and in those presentations, you create a lot of categories, create the categories first. What this allows you to do is if you create those titles, put in those categories, you can add items directly from the title. If you add it directly from the title, those items that you add in will show up after the title, but before the next one. So if I click that add button, add in a bunch of cardigans, they'll all show after the word cardigan, but before the word hoodie. Saves you a lot of time rather than you having to drag and drop items after the fact. Next one is called dummy presentations. And if you're not doing this now, start. Dummy presentations or stock presentations are a great way if you have common items that you love showing. Go into CommonSkew, create yourself as a client, and build out presentations of your favorite or most showed items. You know, Aaron's favorite apparel, Aaron's favorite tech items, Aaron's hard goods. Add presentations in for yourself. What you can do then is whenever you're creating a presentation for a client and you want to show them some of your favorite items, some stuff that you love showing clients, you can go in, click the previous orders button, and you can pull items from those stock presentations onto a current client presentation. Supplier change. Now this is kind of like a quick change artist. Sometimes you're creating an order and a supplier is just out of stock or something and you just need to change who the vendor is for that particular item. Well, you can do that inside of the shipping tab. When you click edit on an item under the shipping tab on a project, you can change who the vendor is of that item in the first drop down menu. Now, I want you to err on the side of caution with this because the item number does need to be the same. Okay, you don't want to place an order for Sanmar and you change it to Alpha and you go from getting shirts to pants, right? So you cannot change the item number, but you can change who the supplier is there, and that will then create the PO for whatever supplier it is that you selected. The next one is called all-in-one pricing, and this is something that I run into a lot when I'm showing people the system. Sometimes you just want to show one price to your client. And that's totally fine. Maybe you don't want to do all the math about, you know, you want to charge $4.50 for a shirt and then you need to charge $2 for the decoration. And that's because you want to sell it all at $6.50. Sometimes you want to skip all that math and you just want to go in and say, hey, this is $6.50. And that's what I've done here. You can put in $6.50 for the item at the top. And then down below, you can still put in your decoration cost, but then just zero out the retail. Okay. You can see the item at the top has a margin of 61%. And then the retail for the actual decoration down below is zero. And then the bottom right-hand corner, that drags the margin down to 44%. So it's a much easier way to do it this way rather than having to do all the math yourself and then hopefully get around the margin that you were hoping for or trying to figure out the right retail. To be determined artwork. Sometimes you're just waiting for artwork and it's taking forever and you just want to get your client to sign off on an order. So you don't want to wait for that to come in. You just want to get the client to sign off on it and get it into production. Well, what you can do is every client profile actually has a to be determined file. You can go and you can add this to be determined file into any item and you can still fill out all the details. So the client can still see all of that. The to be determined file then shows as a blank on the sales order or on the estimate. And then when you actually get the artwork, you can switch the to be determined file out for the actual artwork. So you don't have to wait on that artwork for your client to sign off on it. And then once you replace it with the real artwork, you can generate your decorator PO or replace that onto your decorator PO. Tag hacks. Now, tagging is something I talk to a lot of distributors about. So there are a bunch of different ways for you to kind of handle tags within the system. The first one is client tags. So you can tag a client, obviously, to group them together. Or in my example, you can use it for ROI on marketing campaigns. Tag every client that you do sell promo with, that you send that out to. And then you can use that tag inside of our reporting section to see if you've grown your business with that client year over year. Or you can use contact tags. 
Maybe you have a client that five people order a promo from you, but you're only getting all of the business from three of them. Tag those two other individuals so you can target market those two specific prospects that you want to grow the business with them. Or tag owners of companies because you just want to send a blast to all those owners. These are all easy ways to use tags and enhance your target marketing. And the last one is order tags. Things like dead order reasoning or order and client sources. Go in and when you create a project, tag that order, you know, where it came from, online, from the phone, in person. Or if you lose an order, you lose a presentation, tag that product, tag that project with why you lost it. Maybe you lost it to a competitor. Maybe they didn't like your ideas. This all filters through to our reporting section so you can see, oh, I lost these presentations to a competitor or because of pricing or something. And it will help make your reporting much, much stronger inside of the platform. This next feature is groups, and groups can be found in the admin section. Groups won't actually be applicable to everyone, um, but it's a way for you to group different reps that you have at your company together. So if you want, you can see on my screen, I have top rep team of me, Catherine, and Dave, and the need some work team of Bobby, Mark, and Sam. Um, but if maybe you have reps that, you know, some of them work on the east and some of them work in the west, or some of them work in this particular part of the business and others work on this particular part of the business. Okay, you can group reps together for reporting purposes. So if I want to group reps together and I want to see my results, you know, how much has this group of reps sold? I can actually do that in my reporting section. And it's really easy to set up inside of that admin group section. The next one is PL Common SKU style. Now, obviously, you know that we don't have accounting built into the platform, but sometimes you want to see your profitability on jobs. If you aren't doing commissions inside of the platform, I'm not going to tell you to do them in the platform, but go in and add a 0% commission rate for all of your salespeople. Add it to every salesperson. What that'll do is on every order that they process, it will go in and it will calculate out a commission of 0% for them on every order. But what that does is it puts that order onto our commission report. And our commission report, you can kind of use as a PL. You can look at every single project that you have in the system that's been invoiced that all have their vendor bills entered, and you can see what the actual profit was on each job. So this is a great way for you to be able to have like a quick little glimpse PNL um, that will help complement the QuickBooks Zero or whatever it is you're using for your accounting backend. Invoice this later. This is something that I actually just figured out with the distributor not too long ago, but inside of the operations client invoicing section, there's a little checkbox for any sales orders ready for invoicing. Now, no, this doesn't allow you to batch invoice, but what it does allow you to do is mark that invoice. Maybe you need to do something with that invoice later. Maybe you're still waiting for shipping costs, so you don't want to click into it over and over again and be like, oh, yeah, I was, I'm still waiting on this. So you can actually mark those invoices with that checkbox, and if you leave and come back to it, it'll still be marked. So it's a way for you to kind of like internally flag those invoices that, hey, I need to do something with this later so you can see what's ready to invoice now versus what you're kind of waiting for stuff on. Forecasting. So this is actually also in the operations client invoicing section. But if you go to the sales orders in production report, you can actually forecast here. This is the only report that you can actually look at stuff by enhanced date other than our new projects tab, which we'll talk about in a bit. But this report, you can actually say, hey, show me anything that has an enhanced date for this time frame." So for me, I'm looking for January 15th to 31st. What's expected to land over those course of two weeks? And I can see that I have four orders that currently have POs that should be landing then. So I know that I'm going to be invoicing $15,000 in those two weeks. So it's a really easy way to get a nice little glimpse at what you have coming down your invoicing pipeline. So that's it for hacks. Let's talk a little bit about what's new over the course of the last year. We've obviously been very busy. The first thing is kind of like Inception. What's new is what's new, like an Abbott and Costello, and Costello sketch. What's new is the what's new section. On the left-hand side of your toolbar, you have a what's new section that we post in with support articles and videos, everything that's new. So if you haven't looked at that, start taking a look at that You know, around the end of every month, beginning of every month, and see what we released in the course of the last month. Next, we have the search party. Now, the search party is something that we did. We upgraded our search bar at the very top. What this is, is now kind of your recent menu. So it'll show you your last six projects that you've worked on. It's a way to start brand new projects. And it's a much better way for you to be able to search out projects. 
you can actually go in and you can just type in the actual project number and it will find that project for you and you can click on it. You should love this feature because no longer do you have to go onto that search page and then scroll down to the sales order and click on the number. It'll pull it up here for you and you can click on that invoice number. And it'll take you straight there. Show your colors. So for anybody who doesn't know, we released brand new forms last year. Um, the forms are much better, much more responsive, and they honestly just look nicer. So we actually enhanced that as well. By now you can actually go in and you can customize the header text color at the very top of your screen. So you can see I have mine in green, yellow, and blue. So you now have the option to go up and customize that along with your branding colors. The project portal. So the project portal is a way for your client to see an entire project history. So it's a portal that you can share the link with your client. They can click on it and they can see everything that's happened with that specific project. So they can see the previous presentation, the estimate, the order. They can check out all those things. They can see anything that you've emailed to them on the right-hand side, along with any comments that they've left on uh, presentations, sales order approvals, proof approvals, all of those things. It also prompts them to do actions. So you can see that they have like a little bell next to order status. So that means that they have something that they can view there. So it's a way for your client to have a bit of a glimpse into what's going on with that project along with the history all in one spot. Now, the really cool part about this is this works in with our connected workflow, everybody picking up the phone less. And where I really, really like the project portal is when you get to the order status. When you get to the order status, your client can click on order status and they can see what items are currently in proofing, what items are in production, and what have shipped out to them. Now, the really cool part about this with shipped is if you fill out the tracking ID on the production report, that will filter all the way down to the project portal. And so your client will actually be able to see that. So a really, really easy way to get your client to start adopting this is instead of attaching forms every time you send something out to them, just go in and say, hey, I updated your portal and drop the portal link in there for them. They can click on that and it gets that behavior going that they're constantly checking that portal to see what's going on with their project right now. The other thing that uh, is really funny about the portal is at the very, very end here, you can see I have a clapping monkey. We actually put this in. This is an Easter egg inside of Common SKU, but our dev team put this in. If you complete a portal completely, everything, you do a presentation, estimate, order, deposit invoice, you fill out all the order stats, you get proof approval, your client, you send them the invoice, and then they fill out feedback, they'll actually get this clapping monkey at the end. So we actually put this in uh, when we released the portal, but nobody's found it yet. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. It's pretty hilarious. You can go in and kind of check it out for yourself. Zip to tax, everybody's favorite topic, taxes. So zip to tax is a system that we've integrated with that actually allows you to automatically calculate the tax that should be charged on an order based off of the shipping zip code. Now this will only work if you are using QuickBooks Online and their automated sales tax system. If you're on QuickBooks Online and you're not sure, you can check, okay? Or if you are on their old tax system, you can go in and you can uh, email QuickBooks and they'll be able to switch you over to AST, but it only works if you're on automated sales tax. But what this does, like I said, it's gonna automatically calculate the tax rate based on whatever city, state, backyard, neighborhood, city block that you're on. Uh, it's going to calculate the proper tax rate without you having to manually update your tax rates every month, two hours, or however often Americans do it. Credit hold. So this was actually a feature request that we got from a bunch of distributors. But you know, sometimes you just need to get paid and a client is way behind on paying you and you want to prevent people from putting in more orders for that client. So what you have the ability to do is put that client now on a hold. This can be done from inside of the client profile, and it can also be unlocked. So you can unlock it whenever your payment is received. So this is a client who maybe is behind on payments, or you know they have a certain amount that you allow them in credit, and they're past that, um, or they put in like a $25,000 order, and you want to be able to hold that till you get a deposit. Okay, what this will do is you can apply the credit hold to a client, and it prevents any purchase orders getting created for any of those clients' orders until the credit hold is removed. And this is all done through permissions and on the client page. So you can see if you go to the client page, you can click on the actions button and there will be an apply credit hold if you have permission to apply it. That's also where you're able to remove it. 
and we'll pop up this warning every time that you open up a project for that client or every time you go to that client page. So something that we actually just recently released was also the projects tab. Now navigating through common skew and looking for projects kind of look like this young gentleman going down this water slide in air quotes, um, down kind of these wet steps. It was a little bit bumpy and it was a little bit hard to figure out what projects you had on the go. So now the new projects tab allows you to see all the projects you have in one place, allows you to track things by enhanced date, look at monthly sales targets, and allows you to manage your tasks. So now navigating projects looks a little bit more like this guy coming down the water slide. It's a little bit smoother. So that projects tab itself kind of looks like this, where you're able to see all of your open projects. So it's going to base this off of enhanced date. So I can look at what's overdue. I can look at what I have expecting to land in January, February, or March. So it'll show you your previous two months in overdue and the next three months in the following three columns. Then in the bottom, it's also going to show you, okay, this is how much we're expecting to land. And you'll notice that some of the numbers are green and some of them are black. Green numbers are any sales orders and any invoices. Black numbers are any pre-sales. So presentations or estimates, those will show in black. The other cool part about this is the tasking part. Now you can click on any project on that projects tab and it will show you general information on the left like in hand state, who the rep is, the budget, the status of it, but it also shows you a task list. So you're able to set tasks inside of a project now rather than reminders. And those tasks will all show on that separate task report under that projects tab. From here, you can actually go in and you can check off tasks that you've completed. You can add tasks, you can edit tasks, all from this one place. So we're trying to create a more centralized place for you to be able to manage every project at every stage that you have them all in. Proofing is another feature that we released. This is kind of the big thing that we came out at the beginning of last year. Um, if you don't know this already, you have the ability to download and then upload a vendor proof into Common SKU. You can send that proof out to your client through Common SKU, and then the client can actually approve it through here as well. And we find that just this is allowing you to create kind of a more consistent branding experience. We try and keep it super simple for you, really simple for your clients so they can actually go through, just approve, request wherever they need, and so you guys can kind of continue to get that into production. Email forwarding, now this is a feature that's a little bit hidden. You actually have the ability to forward emails out of Outlook or Gmail into a project or into a client profile. So this can be done to a project by using your domain and the project number. So for me, it'd be Vandalay hashtag the project number at commonskewmail.com. Or if I want to send something to a client profile, all I have to do is send it to Vandalay at commonskewmail.com and it will put it into that client profile. Now, Either of these things will work. The key thing to know is that you need to know what your domain is and the project number uh, to forward something to a project. And to send something into a client profile, you have to forward or BCC it with the actual email coming from a recognized contact and a unique contact. So for example, if you have three people inside of CommonSkew in your CRM that are all Aaron at CommonSkew.com, okay, and you try and forward an email in that came from me, then that's not going to work because there's three contacts. We don't know which file profile to put that in. It has to be a unique contact that you're forwarding the email from into our system for us to assign that to the right client profile. Now, this is actually one that we released right before Expo, and I call this previous forum product. A very common request we got was, hey, Aaron, I created this sales order. My client called me and they said, oh, I also want to add in those pens that were on that presentation. And previously, there was no great way to do it. You would create the sales order with a tumbler on it or something, um, and then you want to pull across some pens that were also from the presentation. So you had already converted the sales order down with the tumbler, but to get the pens on there that you also showed them, you would have to click add and then re-add the pens like they're brand new, or you'd have to delete the sales order and then reconvert the presentation. Well, you don't need to do that anymore. If you convert something down to an estimate or a sales order, and then you need something else from that presentation, you can actually click back to the presentation and every item will have a little button on it that says copy to sales order or copy to estimate. And you'll be able to pull items from that old presentation or that original presentation, that original estimate, onto the next form down. So that's everything we've got uh, kind of that's new this year, along with some hacks for you. If you have any questions about this stuff, as always, you can reach out to me and the team at support at commonskew.com.